Okay, back to our demonstration. In this part of the demonstration, we're going to take a look at the hiring functions that are part of SPHR. Now, hiring spans from the original request or job requisition submitted by the manager. And uh, if we took a look earlier at the manager video, um, we can uh, see where they actually submit um, the requisitions. So a requisition is exactly what it says. Let's take a look at this. It is basically a description of a um, opening or a position and uh, this one's pending approval right now. But uh, we can see that there's a job description and you can actually, if you want, cross-reference job descriptions from uh, documents or a um, <coughs> another list. Um, location, start date, hiring manager, department, so everything really to describe uh, it. You can also assign it to an HR person here as well. Um, there is approval information and then we can see cross-referenced with this requisition once it's posted and you can see all applicants that have applied for the position here and actually open and look at the applica applicants from here. Um, we also can see which ones made it through to candidates and any approval information for uh, when it was approved and who it was approved by and so on. So uh, that's how it all starts is a requisition. Now from the requisition, um, many companies take many different kind of tracks at this point. Um, some of them may post the position out to a recruiting site. Uh, obviously that differs by region of the world that you're in. Uh, we don't do anything out of the box to automate that because there's so many of them to do that. But we can customize it uh, to uh, allow you to push the, this information out to recruiting sites um, if you have specific ones you want to use. Uh, the other thing that we have an option for is to actually post them on your site. So one of the things that we see happens a lot with um, our customers is they may post it on different recruiting sites. In the U.S. it's monster.com or Indeed or some of those types of sites. But the key thing you want to do is not necessarily have the interested applicants send you a resume. You want them to come to a career page uh, on your site. And um, this is an example. It's our again our, our scenario company, Radiant Solar. And they have a career page out here um, that uh, talks about the company. And then what we are able to do with our careers option, um, career page option, is to actually push that requisition information, the ones that are approved and you, and you wish to push up here, um, to show on the career page that people can um, look through. Uh, they can look by location and, and uh, so on. And they want to pick up the um, position ID because once they do that, they can actually then fill out a form with their interest and some background information about their skills and so on. They can put that position ID in, they can upload their resume and submit. And this is something that we work with you to place on your website uh, as well. Or if you can't do that, um, you can even just have the applicant form uh, available for people to fill out too. Uh, so a lot of flexibility there. That's why we make these uh, add-in options. Now, where do those forms go? Okay, or you can also, by the way, just do your regular thing with resumes and and manually put people uh, into this. But where where it goes is our applicants list. So if we look at hiring here, uh, it kind of flows in the cycle job requisitions, the applicants that come in, and we cross-reference them. So here's Jim Anderson here. Let's take a look at um, Jim, and he sent in, um, he filled out the form, said he was interested, and uploaded his resume, and now he is in as an applicant. This whole list is really built so that you can um, really weed through the different applicants uh, here. Here you can see selected that Jim was selected, but received, rejected. We can actually even build a um, automated email if they're rejected that uh, says thank you and so on. Um, we cross-reference it with the requisition, which was that customer service rep, and uh, we actually can say where where did Jim come from and so on. And base information like address, skill set, and resume, and cross-reference that resume that uh, we can take a look at at any time. Now the interesting thing here too is you can put in notes 
about Jim um, and uh, you know share that with the managers because the managers here also have my applicants and can see those and work with HR to figure out which ones they want to select to take to the next step. And as any of the list, again, you can list applicants. <coughs> this becomes really your database. Uh, we also see people on status. Th though they may have been rejected, you may want to add a field that says, you know, future consideration um, uh, as well. Maybe they didn't fit that job, but uh, you may want to keep them in the database for a future job uh, as well, too. Um, for our friends over in Europe with GDPR, um, you can also have them automatically be deleted at a certain point, too which is, uh, I know, some of that regulation. So the next step, though, is once somebody is selected, they become a candidate. And candidates are really what you want to take through um, the whole process um, of uh, hiring or of interviewing, hiring, those type of things, too. So let's take a look at uh, what happens in a candidate. It's automatically copied over to the candidate list for those that are selected. So here's the candidate, and what we can see now is, again, we bring over the base information. We have status now here, but we also have stages, and you can actually put them through different stages, track the stages uh, where they're at. Again, we bring over the base information, and again, the notes are all date and time stamped, and you can cross-reference it with the resume. So uh, very much kind of the same thing, but now we're putting them through different stages. And one of the things that we can customize is based on the stage, um, we can actually um, you know, generate tasks or whatever to do reference checks or um, even cross-reference it with calendars for interviews and, and uh, even generate offer letters. That's all custom. It's not part of the base product, but it's something that we can build in because it is somewhat unique um, to uh, each uh, customer out there. Okay, and so that is hiring. The next step, by the way, um, is onboarding. So whoever uh, you have as in a hired status, in fact, Jim here, we will actually see that uh, then he feeds into the whole onboarding process where we save you a lot of time in, in um, paperwork and those type of things uh, and making sure that the uh, things are done, the tasks are done to bring Jim up to speed as quick as possible. So that's our next one.